NASA says live long and we found Vulcan, like the real one in space right now, like a real life, like up there. Look, I'm not gonna go all colon R on this, but is this real? Hey nerd fam, welcome to Uno Dose of Trace, I'm Trace, and in this segment, is this real? I look into the research that supports or debunks something that's going around the cyberwebs. And this week, my Trekkie buddy Kenny texted me to tell me that planet Vulcan is real. That's right, the planet where Spock and other countless characters from Trekland originated is out there in our universe right now. Until Eric Bana destroys it, of course, if you're all alternate timeline. It is true that sometimes NASA gets a little N-U-T-T-Y, but is this one of those times? Here's what we know. Astronomers announced the Dharma Endowment Foundation Telescope in Arizona spotted an exoplanet orbiting 40 Eridani A. The planet is tidally locked, likely, so it doesn't rotate. One side always faces the sun. It orbits every 42 days. Is a super Earth, meaning it's big. Man, it's real big. Almost twice the size of our planet, and it orbits in the habitable zone, an orbit where temperature allows for liquid water. It's also really close to us. It's only 16 and a half light years away, which makes sense if the pointy-eared bastards are gonna come. Eridani is a bright spot in the constellation Eridianus. It's a river. If Orion took a baby step forward, he would be knee-deep in the Eridianus River. You can see the system with the naked eye, but you can't see that 40 Eridani is not just one star. No, no, no. It is a trinary system. There are three stars, A, B, and C, and they were discovered in 1783 by William Herschel. So, we have a star system. Vulcan is the name for the Roman god of fire and volcanoes, and in the 19th century, astronomers believed that there might be another planet between Mercury and the Sun, because Mercury's orbit was all weird, and they couldn't think of how to explain it with Newton's new math, and then Einstein shows up, and he's all like, nah, nah, I got this general relativity, but they were gonna call that planet Vulcan. So, we have a planet's name. How the two got linked to Star Trek comes down to a 1968 book titled Star Trek II. It was by James Blish. He pegged our green-blooded bastardos to the home planet of Vulcan in the system 40 Eridani in the book in the 60s. And after an extensive search, I actually found the actual book at a book repository. And he writes on page 34 that Kirk says, <clears throat> Mr. Spock's father was a native of the Vulcan, which is a planet of 40 Eridani. That's right, he said, the Vulcan. To distinguish it from the 19th century Vulcan, because at the time of Star Trek, the original series, there'd only been one fictional planet Vulcan, the one that may have existed between the Mercury and the Sun. And it didn't, of course, but this Vulcan was new from the show. The books were written to support the show, so Blish had to acknowledge this new Vulcan somewhere. Star Trek is pretty good with the science, but no one mentioned which of the three stars it orbited at any point, and we'd known they were there for almost 200 years. Then in 1980, Star Trek Maps was written by Jeff Maynard, and it is so nerdy. It's a Starfleet Academy text, and it explains how warps work, and it lays out coordinates in 3D space, and shows locations of Federation and non-Federation planets. It's actually awesome. Look at this. This diagram lays out how omnidirectional beacons help starships navigate in Federation space. Ugh! God, I know what I'm gonna do this Sunday. I put the full PDF in the links, nerd fan. Book club? Yeah, I got you. Maps also pegged it at 40 Eridani. So how did they know there was a planet there? Long story short, they didn't. But then enter Gene Roddenberry himself. In 1991, in a letter to Sky and Telescope magazine for the 25th anniversary of the show, Roddenberry and three astronomers from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics wrote, 40, Eridani A, is the most likely candidate for Vulcan in real life. It's a large orange star, is four billion years old, about the same as ours, so there's enough time for intelligent life to evolve. And Dr. Sally Balyunas included the sunspot cycle in the letter to indicate its age. Thanks, Sally. But this is where the realness sort of breaks down. On fandom, they write, Quote, Vulcan had a considerably higher gravity, thinner atmosphere, and higher temperatures than Earth. The gravity makes sense because it's a super Earth, but the higher temperatures, that would be tough to say. See, 40 Eridani A is cooler than our star, but the planet is considerably closer. The letter also mentions that there would be two other stars, quote, gleaming brilliantly in the Vulcan sky, and they would appear brighter than like a bright Venus. Correct me if I'm wrong, nerd fam, but I don't ever recall hearing mention of the Vulcan as a multi-star system. So nobody knew that Vulcan was there, but they guessed that a planet might exist around that star and it might harbor some uber-logical life and it just so happens, amazingly, that they were right. Vulcan is real, sorta. Of. 
because this planet is not actually named Vulcan, it's named the catchy HD26965b. And when it was randomly selected by Blish in the 1960s, they didn't even know exoplanets existed. It would be 24 more years before the first exoplanet confirmation. Since 1992, we've confirmed almost 3,800 extrasolar planets, and there are thousands of candidates still waiting for confirmation. Planets might be more common than we thought. But this story is really the science writers of the world looking at the science fiction writers of the world and being like, y'all got something right! The astronomers in this paper are pushing to name HD 26965b Vulcan, which is just the best. Because like the Starship Enterprise, this is going to be yet another fictional story stepping off of the pages of imagination and into real life. Nerd fam, tell me about your Star Trek dreams. Tell me everything that you thought about this video. There's a comment section. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. You name it. Come find me. And if you liked it, share it with your friends because we're growing this channel together. We've gained a lot of subscribers. Welcome new people. I love you. Hi, I'm Trace. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, nerd fam. I'll be seeing you. Oops.